Hi, I'm Tony Ebuganum, the modern mixologist. You're joining me on WSWA TV. I'm here in Orlando with Nick Nitzico and Scott Hirsch. Nick, man, you rocked it again, my brother. Thank you so much, Tony. You won the aperitif, you won the overall. Nick has won virtually every cocktail competition out there, creates great cocktails, worked in some of the hottest bars across the country. Most recently in Miami, you were at the Soho House, you were at the uh, Region, region Cocktail Club. Love the Region Cocktail. I mean, you're a rock star, man. What's next? Tell me, I, tell me. I appreciate it, Tony. I just try and surround myself with the best in the business. Constantly try and learn, stay humble, and just look for things that kind of drive creativity. I love that. Stay humble, man. You represent everything that I think a bartender should represent. And I, you know, well, coming from you, that couldn't be a better compliment, Tony. All right, so you've been in this show before. Tell me a little bit about your winning cocktails. You know, I came and just brought as much stuff as I could to be prepared for whatever the secret ingredients were going to be. And uh, fortunately, they were, it was rather simple. I mean, I'm, I work with fresh fruit and fresh herbs constantly. So when it came out, I felt very comfortable. From there, I just wanted to look to our brands and kind of pair the right brands that I felt would really fit with the different ingredients and come up with cocktails that fit the category. A proper aperitif cocktail, a proper long drink. And then from there, just make it fun. Put smiles on faces. And, not be so serious about it. I love that. Put smiles on faces. So t often we lose track of the fact that we are in the hospitality industry. And making a great cocktail is part of it, but... Hospitality is everything. Hospitality is everything. So, so tell us a little bit about what went into each of these drinks that you made. So for the uh, aperitif style cocktail, I did dry sherry as the base spirit, which was great. It's the first time I've ever done one of these where I've, where I've used sherry as the base. Did a French 75 style cocktail with that, so a little bit of citrus, a little bit of simple syrup, topped with Prosecco. I incorporated sage and celery into it. Sage and celery go so well with sherry, salty, yeah. dry, and then a nice slice of prickly pear with sparkling Prosecco over top. And like I said, that prickly pear bleeds in, just gives it a beautiful pink color. Prickly pear, a natural color, is so great. Well, obviously here at WSWA in the Iron Mixologist competition, you're up against the best of the best. It really is. It really is top-notch competition. I mean, these are seasoned veterans, guys and women that have competed in so many cocktail competitions that you really need to bring your A game. You got to bring your A game. But what, what I love the most, Nick, is the camaraderie. You know, you guys are competing against each other, but, you know, there's still that, do you, you need some mint? Can I help you with this? Let me, yeah, you know, you, I don't know of another industry where you have that camaraderie. Not at all, not at all. And you know, it comes from us uh, fighting the war together. You know, we're all fighting the battle behind the stick and uh, now we're all fighting it on the other side of the stick. So Scott, your role at Premier Beverage, tell me a little bit about it. So I'm the vice president of on-premise. So as part of that and the growing trend of craft cocktails and mixologists and, and people like Nick who really take their craft seriously, uh, we were able to build a mixology and training center within our office and uh, was, we're lucky enough to get someone like Nick to come run it for us. And uh, just the evolution of what's happening and how bartenders, you know, we joke around about the mixolog mixologist term, but how bartenders have really, really loved their craft and are really taking a, an interest. And uh, Nick's been with us a little over a year and a half now and just paying huge dividends for us to get bartenders trained on our brands and how to create cocktails. and. Uh, it's really a great, great tool for us. So when you have a, a rock star like Nick who develops these amazing cocktails, how do you take that out into the market and share that with your customers? Well, we, uh, in a couple different ways. Nick, a couple times a week, has groups coming through the Mixology and Training Center. And he'll go through his process of how he makes cocktails, how he uses fresh ingredients, and how he can really deliver. You know, Miami's got really busy nightclubs and bars and they always think they can't do fresh and he shows them how you if you prepare and that's why he wins competitions like this is because he prepares I mean when those pineapples came out before he even knew what the secret ingredient was he was already carving the pineapples in just the the case that he could use that as a vessel for the drink and you know I walk into the training center in the mornings and this looks like a you know a fresh market <laughs> you know that we just walked into and so he brings people in uh, accounts come in and out, and uh, they, they usually say, where were you five years ago when I learned how to bartend? Well, that's such a great statement you just made, Scott, because even five years ago, 
seven years ago in Miami, really around the country, you didn't have the commitment. You didn't have people like Nick who were really embracing the craft. And now five, seven, ten years later, sharing that with the next uh, generation of great bartenders. It's amazing. One of the first trainings he did when we first started with us was a vermouth training. And 20 USBG members sat for an hour and a half and listened to people talk about vermouth. And I was just amazed that they took that much time to develop their craft. It's really amazing what's happening out there. It's funny you talk about vermouth because, you know, when I started in 1980, um, you know, the vermouth was kind of the afterthought. It was the stuff in the well that with a speed pour in it and a family of fruit flies living exactly. in the bottom. <laughs> and now the fact that people are coming out to listen to Nick do an hour and a half seminar in vermouth, I think just speaks volumes to where the profession has come. 100%. This working as a great partnership between the distributor and the bartenders. Yeah. You know, like we said, the educational resource, premier beverage, I mean, the resources, and the time and effort that they put behind me to help me be successful in my job, Tony, is really everything that it's been to, to make it successful. Get out there and put me in front of the right people and help me continue to learn. And like you said, what a great thing. I wish that I would have been privileged enough to sit through some of these training courses myself yeah. when I first started bartending. So now I look to it to be that guy for, for the younger generation. You're absolutely right. And I, I say the same thing when I speak to bartenders. I, boy, I wish in 1990, 1985, 1980, when I started, that I had the opportunity to sit through Nick holding a vermouth seminar. Man. Brother? Tony, thank you so much. Congratulations again. Thank you. Well deserved. Really appreciate Scott. it. Scott. And that's it from WSWA.